Hi there, I'm Jamie Taylor. Welcome to Your Health Matters, brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center, your community-owned hospital. Every week I have a different guest on the program, and we talk about programs, services, healthcare issues that I think are going to be relevant to you and your family. So I hope you'll stay tuned. We'll be back right after these messages with another exciting guest. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Jason Metcalf. He's the Director of Patient Financial Services here at KRMC. Thanks for being on the show today, Jason. Thank you for inviting me. And we've got some important stuff to talk about today. Patient Financial Services, first of all, let's talk about what that is, because sure. a lot of people, you say, patient financial services are like, what does that mean? Right. So what do you do at P PFS? So patient financial <laughs> services is responsible for once patients receive care, our job is to make sure that the billing goes out for the hospital and that it gets to their insurance appropriately and then for uh, patients who have uh, deductibles or coinsurance afterwards, we make sure that those bills go out to them. So the idea is to get it out timely, accurately. Um, and pretty seamless to, to most patients. That's awesome. So you make sure, and two, then you have credentialing you work with as well to make sure our doctors we do. are paid by insurance, right? Absolutely. So we do the credentialing for our physicians. That's a pretty detailed process, and probably most everybody doesn't even want to know about that. Yeah, but, it's way uh, more. <laughs> it's, but yes, we make sure that our physicians are on the rosters for each of our health plans so that people, when they go to their health insurance, they can see which doctors um, are eligible under those health plans. Like in network, as they call exactly. it. Exactly. Okay, very yeah. good. So the billing part, of course, is very important, and working with the insurance companies is very important because there's so many of them. I, I don't are. even know. Do you have any well, idea how many insurance companies it, are out there right now? You know, now? It, it's almost <laughs> like every year there's a new insurance company right. that comes about. So the idea is to, but there's probably a fewer number that are very active within our county. Okay. And so we, we try and stay up with uh, all of the insurances that are active within our county. So our major employers, like the city, the county, exactly. out at the airport, the, whatever insurance companies they have. Manufacturing, mining, whatever everybody right. has, yes. Okay. So affordable health care. I know that's a word everybody's kind of like, oh. a lot of people were kind of hoping it would just go away and they wouldn't have to deal with it. But exactly. It didn't, so it, no. <laughs> it hasn't gone away, so it's something that we're, it's a, it's a new world, we're having to live with it. And you know, in healthcare, healthcare is constantly uh, evolving and changing, um, and due to that, you know, it, I think that's what makes it kind of challenging and fun to be in the field. Um, but with the Affordable Care Act uh, that's been passed, uh, effective January 1st, people that really didn't have access to healthcare now have uh, the ability to possibly be covered under health care plans. Okay. And that's what's wonderful about it. Um, in a sense, I know people were worried about, you know, how much is it going to cost and all that. But at this point, now that legislation's been passed, I mean, our tax dollars are going to be spent somewhere. They might as well be spent in Arizona. Right. So, uh, but the opportunity now is that patients who are at 133% of the federal poverty level, um, those patients are now eligible for access program um, that, that were not eligible for access last year. A couple of years ago, our access program dropped a number of individuals, right. and now those individuals who had been dropped possibly have access to um, health care again under our access program. But then individuals um, before that couldn't kind of qualify fell for through the cracks, right? access and felt the cracks, exactly, they now have um, the ability um, to get coverage under this Affordable Care Act. And what happens is our federal government actually subsidizes families based on their income and the number uh, of people that they have in their family, not only for premium, which means how much they pay each month in okay. order to pay for the coverage, but they also help um, even other families as well after premium for coinsurance and deductibles. Oh, so there's I didn't a, that. a variety of, of different methods to help make af health care affordable to people. And so I think it's important now that the the statutes in place um, that patients start to get enrolled mm -hmm. and um, one of the things that we're trying to do within our business office is get information out there. Um, Let people know how they can get enrolled and of course we know that back November and December of course there was a lot of issues with getting signed up online and that Absolutely. The, the, the news, federal right? government definitely had some troubles with their websites. Uh, many of those things have been fixed now. Okay. Um, you know, and what we've been able to do is we actually had a health fair 
health insurance fair mm -hmm. in October of this last year, um, and we were able to help. Uh, there was about 100 people that we saw. And we were able to help several people, um, well over 50 people sign up on Medicaid programs, and then we've been helping and assisting people with the ACA programs as well. Now, um, the problem with the ACA is that it doesn't, people can't just sign up whenever they want. Oh, it I seems didn't know that. like that right now, but unlike Medicaid, where a person for Medicaid can sign up pretty much at any time, uh, that's not true with the ACA. The ACA has a deadline on March 31st, so anybody who does not sign up and doesn't have coverage by March 31st, they will actually experience a tax um, penalty, penalty at the end of the year. So, so that'll be for their 2014 taxes that they'll file next year in exactly. 2015. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So it's important that people get signed up. Okay. So and in, we're doing our best to help them. Um, in fact, I think we have another enrollment fair you're going to do. We do. On February 21st, okay. the plan is to do another health enrollment fair. Um, this time we're going to be s focused a lot on the access and the ACA plans now that those ACA plans are running. So the idea is to get as many people involved. We're, we're hoping that uh, family members will talk with family members and friends and you know make sure that everybody in our community is getting enrolled. Um, because our community does have health needs. Right. And without um, adequate health insurance, sometimes those health needs get delayed. Um, people don't get the prescriptions they need. They don't go see the doctor as often as they need to. And with these new programs, people are able to get access to health care that they never had before. Um, and so we need to be thinking about those friends and, and relatives that may not be as assertive because they're not feeling well. They're not mm -hmm. getting uh, what they need. Or maybe they think, too, that I'm fine right now. I don't need a doctor, but we all know it could happen tomorrow. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we see it all the time. We have some very active lifestyles within Kingman, people who are using, you know, all-terrain vehicles and, and oh, yeah, four-wheelers and, you know, or, or just going on a, on a weekend ski trip, and the next thing they know, they've got a broken arm or broken leg, right. and uh, they need health care. So it's important not just for people who, who already have health conditions, but people who are active younger people. I mean, one of the biggest things in, in our country is that um, health care has been unaffordable for, for younger people, right. and yet younger people still need health care because they're the ones that are most likely to experience the highest health care cost when it comes to an accident or because injury. Because of the act, they're more exactly. apt to, prone to have yeah. those accidents. I mean, yeah. had a buddy who, who broke his leg in four places um, recently, <laughs> and you know, that's not one of those things you would expect. Fortunately, he didn't have health care coverage, but if he hadn't, it would have cost him tens of thousands of dollars. Right, yeah, because so. health care is not cheap, you no, know, unfortunately. Not but, but with this health care act and the government subsidies, it makes it affordable for pretty much everybody. Wonderful. So there's some uh, really good things about it. I mean, I know there was a lot of controversy on both sides for quite a while at the beginning, whether right. it was good or bad, and we're forcing people to get insurance, all of that. But in the long run, it is for their benefit. And, I, and now, what if you already have insurance? I've heard you know, there's been questions about that as well. So for most of the plans that are out there today, uh, most of the plans have stepped up and they're meeting the guidelines uh, and the requirements for under the federal program as well. Okay. Um, for some of the plans, we have seen some plans that are saying, hey, we're not going to run this plan anymore after this year. So sometimes and the ACA stuff is also good for people to look at if they're um, looking at their insurance and going, you know what, my insurance seems kind of expensive, my out-of-pocket seems kind of expensive, maybe there's something for me. So we're encouraging people to even look at those okay. programs. Um, the other thing that we're going to have at the fair is that sometimes there's Medicare patients um, that, you know, our co-insurance co and deductibles are getting higher and higher mm -hmm. every year. Um, and so some of these patients, they now would be eligible also for access programs that they may not have thought that they were oh, available I didn't before. realize that. Or there's other programs that work closer together where their Medicare and their Medicaid can work together. Um, and so we're going to have people available at that fair to be able to stuck to discuss some of those options. Okay, so, so. that's going to be awesome because okay. you're really going to be able to answer this, everybody's questions. That, that's our hope options. is that yeah. whatever questions people have, and you know, we may not have all of the experts, but we know we have the right people who know where to find the answers. That's wonderful. And at the enrollment fair, literally, you're going to have computers so people can come in and get signed up that day? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, it, with the technology today, we can get on the websites. The websites are working much better. Good. Now, the way it works is you can sign up and, and get enrolled. The first, the steps that people need to take is um, even 
now people can go and, and, and sign up on a website even prior to uh, the health insurance um, enrollment mm -hmm. fair, uh, what happens is that uh, they will get an eligibility letter. Um, what we do is we want to enroll people, get them their eligibility letter that will tell them what they're eligible for, then we can explain those options with them and we can help them in the selection process of their plans. And again, it's us looking at their stuff to benefit them because we, we don't get any proceeds or anything like right, that from right. these insurance companies. Uh, I mean, we want to do this neutral and make sure that patients are getting what they need as far as coverage. Um, so we're, we're going to help with all of that. In fact, we may set up follow-up appointments. In fact, we did in the last fair. We're okay. still following up with patients to help make sure that they get what they need in order to get enrolled. And that, I think, segues well into what my next question was, because when you say go in and sign up, Right. That's not the end of the process, obviously, because it there's isn't. There's several steps. So, so people get signed up. They um, have to enter some of their um, personal health, personal information, mostly related to income and family size, because okay. that's what determines what kind of subsidy they're eligible okay. for. Once they've determined that, then they get this eligibility letter that will tell them whether they're eligible for access, whether they're eligible for ACA program subsidies. And that'll come in the mail to them? That, that comes so to later. The, into the mail, or okay. if they sign up on an online account, it will actually come to them through even an email oh, as well. Okay. So okay. it can be done electronically. Uh, once they receive those letters, then they can actually sign up for those programs. When they sign up for and start looking at the health plans, it automatically will change the deductible or premium amounts they can see online exactly what it's going to cost them each oh, month. Oh, that'll be good. And then as soon as they see that, they're not actually covered until they actually send their first premium payment. I was just going to say, you probably got to make so, that first payment. But once they make that first premium payment, they become active uh, that very um, the first day of the very next month. Okay, and now. Are there options available for them as well for paying? I mean, can they do automatic deduction? I mean, like we do payroll deduction, for right. instance. So de depending on the plan that they select, yes, they're, uh, each of the health plans are then responsible for the payment collection. Okay. And so most of them are offering a Your variety of ways choices. to help patients, okay. yes. And so then they will be able to, and I guess that's important for people to realize too, that they're going to be able to, their premium will be based on choices they make as far as how high a deductible they choose. Absolutely. Right? There's a variety of plans. They, they have bronze, silver, gold, platinum plans. Oh, okay. And depending, and, and so premium will vary um, on that, but on the silver plans, there's a special benefit that gives um, people who really have a tough time paying those copayments and mm -hmm. deductibles, if they get that silver plan, they're able to get subsidies from the government to help pay that. So where a person may have a $3,000 deductible or $3,000 coinsurance on a particular plan, if they are eligible for those subsidies, they're still only paying $10 per office visit, oh, wow. maybe $20 for a, uh, a specialist, okay. um, and relatively very little for prescriptions. Okay. So the idea really is to make sure that people can get access to the care that they need. Right, and that's really important because as, it, as we know, right. being in healthcare ourselves, how many people we see that, that like you said, they'll delay their care because they Absolutely. don't have insurance, or they, and when they do come in and they just don't have. Yeah, unfortunately, that is part of the problem in with healthcare in America is that people who don't have the coverage when they delay treatment or they don't get the right treatment, oftentimes the healthcare costs more and it jeopardizes their lives because sometimes there's permanent damage uh, done to a body instead of something that could have been taken care of right. much sooner. Right, so. and that's, we, we push that all the time in this program, the importance of catching it early. I mean, we even have our program called Catch It Early and you know, work very hard on helping people realize the sooner you get diagnosed and get it treated, the better the outcomes are going to be. So. Absolutely, and the, and the regular following up with a physician, at least annually, yeah. um, ensures that people, you know, are able to detect things that maybe they, they feel great today, but they didn't realize, yeah. hey, there really is something going on. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back after these messages and talk about that more. Thank Sounds you. Good. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Jason Metcalf, the Director of Patient Financial Services here at Kingman Regional. Thanks again for being on the show today, Jason. Thank you. We've been talking about affordable health care, and obviously that's in top of mind for everyone right now, and it's very important. You had shared before the break that March 31st, is that it's right? It's actually uh, February 22nd. It, no, but I meant or, the deadline. When oh, March 31st, to, that's correct. I'm sorry, I didn't and mean I to throw you off it there. It was February 21st. <laughs> 
<laughs> so March 31st is when people have to get signed up. If they don't have insurance, absolutely. after March 31st, they'll be fined That's right. for next year on their taxes. And so to help with that, you're putting together an enrollment fair, a second one. We did one in October, now we're doing one that's February 21st. That's correct. And that's going to be in the Delhi Web Wellness Center conference rooms from 10 to 2. That's right. And anybody who doesn't have insurance right now or who has questions, Absolutely. even if they have insurance, right? E even if they have insurance, sometimes people will find uh, that the ACA programs may be better than what they're getting right now. Okay. So people have gone out and purchased an individual plan, there's stuff that's available this year that wasn't available last year. Okay. So it may be something to look at. Right. So they should take advantage of that. Absolutely. And we'll get a phone number for them. They can call my office as well, 757-0664, and I'll be glad to steer them in the right direction for more information. But that enrollment fair, I think it's very important people come. And if for some reason they can't, they can, they'll be able to call your office Absolutely. and have people answer those questions. So we, we do have financial counselors at our office um, and we're still helping people if they have questions about it. Um, we're opening up time to assist patients. Uh, okay. It's normally by appointment because patients do have to bring some of their own personal information in order for us to assist them. I mean, we do need things like social security numbers and, and income and, and family size. Um, but with that information, we don't keep any of that. What we do is we just help them put their information uh, into the computer or on the applications and make sure that their applications are completed fully so that they can learn about the benefits that they're eligible for. That's awesome. And it, so we talked about what, if they come to the enrollment fair, they're going to ne need to know or bring with them like last year's taxes, something you know, like that? Tax forms, uh, check stubs, if they know what they're making, it it's a good idea to have some uh, information, but we don't actually need that. What will happen is that if the federal government needs it, because they already use databases where they can see all that. Sure, they, they know. know a lot about us. <laughs> yeah. So like it or not. <laughs> they will verify the data that, that we put into the system. So um, it's important that, that they know it. Um, they don't want to be, what they don't want to do is they don't want to say, hey, I only make $10,000 a year when they make a lot more than that. Okay. Because what will happen is that they may receive those subsidies, but there's a reckoning Sooner at tax later, time. And <laughs> so when they go to file their taxes, the federal government would find, hey, you actually were making more, and the subsidy uh, we gave you was too much, and you got to pay that pay back. Pay back, yeah. So, so it's better to pay up front than later. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But but the thing is, is that the programs are very generous programs that um, make sure that people can afford this health care. So the idea is just to know what their family income is, okay. what their family size is, and, and make sure that they know their family details. So uh, it's household income. It is. It is household income okay. uh, because it includes the whole family and it's one premium pretty much for the household. Oh, I didn't realize that yeah. either. So that mm -hmm. is, that's a good thing too. Basically 18 and under, I'm it, it is. I mean, there's a little bit of uh, leeway. They've expanded the age as long as you have full-time students in the home. Oh. Uh, I believe that goes up to like 26 now, oh, which wow. is okay. significant. Yes, it is. But it takes longer to get through college these days well, as well. So. True. <laughs> so that's a good thing for people to know as well. So if, even if they have children out of high school, but if they're going on to college, they're going to be able to right. cover them. If, if they're dependents under their family, yes, right. they, yeah. they can be covered under okay. that plan. Well, that's wonderful to know, and, and again, it's going to help them avoid paying those penalties next year on their taxes. So Exactly. Now, we're, okay, so we're saying March 31st is the deadline they have to sign up, and I hate to say that, but what happens to those that don't? So mm -hmm. they, there is a penalty. There's a, a minimum penalty. I believe it's like $93, which doesn't sound like much, or 1% of their um, income. Oh, so that could it, be more. It, it can be a lot more. <laughs> Uh, and so the idea is that, um, uh, the other thing is that that doesn't, they, they're not only penalized, but they also don't have health care coverage. Right, So right. if they continue to delay their care needs or whatever, they're still having to pay those costs um, for physicians and um, and also they're maybe damaging their, their, their own, own health. health yeah. so. Well, and, and unfortunately, especially the young folks, we have a tendency to live in a state of denial that I'm fine right now and I'm never going to get sick or never have an accident. And we all know that we see <laughs> cases all the time where, where people, you know, it's it's a fun weekend on the lake or something like that. Mm -hmm. And suddenly things don't go quite as planned yeah. and the bills pile up from 
very the quickly. Costs very right? quickly. Well, in fact, yeah. I've heard that the number one cause of bankruptcy in the United States is health care bills. It's very I mean, unfortunate. That's, yeah, yeah, but I mean, that's how quickly they can pile up. Yeah. if you don't have insurance and it just takes one catastrophic whether it's an automobile accident a heart attack all those things absolutely i mean th we we provide some of the very best health care in, in the world but it, it does come at a cost and right. um so we save people's lives where in other pl in other countries they they a certain trauma off. would would be life ending right. um we're able to handle that stuff here but but it does come at a cost right so it, it is important that we just realize that we are all at risk to get sick and to need health care, and it's important that we have coverage right. from the you know at the beginning. It, yeah, <laughs> it's it's part of good citizenship in a, in a way because mm -hmm. each and every one of us, as we take care of our own health care needs, what it creates is it, it, it ensures that we're not rolling that on the backs of everybody else. Right, all and of that's, the taxpayers. And that's what's been good. happening with with health care is that you know those who who do have health care coverage they're taking care of their expenses but those that don't we end up taking everybody else pays the for bill it, for it right, as well right so well that's important it's an opportunity for everybody now to take care of those pieces yeah. and, and ensure that they've got um health care coverage that they need and again the other thing is that you know sometimes that sickness and, and stuff like that if it's not treated early you know it gets as worse much, and yeah long-range people don't feel well and, and people want to feel well they right. want to do well well and something as simple as this time of year uh with the flu season coming up and there's the kingman crud going around as they say <laughs> you know it's just a lot of that kind of stuff and if you have health care you can go to the doctor and get a prescription and feel better soon versus it dragging on forever absolutely so, so those are good things so let's go back real quick and remind folks again about the enrollment fair okay. and it's February 21st from 10 to 2 that's correct in the wellness center conference rooms and when they come they need to bring or know what their family household income right portable income is is that net or gross it just dawned on me it's gross okay um, so we we work with gross numbers um, and then it's uh, so they don't have to worry about figuring out taxes and all that okay. stuff. Um, we just take the gross number, we use their family size, and then we just need to know, of course, the personal information related to no. family members. So do you, you need social security numbers for everyone in the family? Not necessarily. Okay. I mean, it's good to have that. It's something Fair that makes the forms easier. Again, the federal government can verify some of it, sure. but sometimes they may request it. And so the more information that they have, the easier it is to get the eligibility information okay. right away. Okay, and it's open to everyone. Like as we talked about, whether they have insurance or not, whether they're on, um, have already retired and are on Medicare, and they right. can look at supplemental packages because as well. Because we're going to have people available to talk about different benefits that people may be eligible, maybe a richer benefit set that they may not even be aware of right now. Okay, that's great to know, and I'm mm -hmm. so thankful that you've yeah. got your staff set up to ha help with this because it is a big question mark for a lot of people. I think it's a huge thing for especially Kingman Mojave County where many people have not been able to afford health care mm -hmm. in the past and so I think it's it's a tremendous benefit for folks here that they're able to now receive benefits that they wouldn't have ever had before yeah. and uh, I think that will make our community much healthier because as they get the health care that they need. That uh, preventative absolutely. really makes a big difference. So I mean this includes children, I mean uh, family members, again, you know, sometimes some of our family members, they're not as assertive. They won't get out. They won't right. do this. So the idea is, hey, bring somebody along to the health fair that you know. Right. Your mom and to, dad. To make sure that they're <laughs> getting grandma. what they need as well because they may not think to do something right. like this. Right, yeah. So we talked about, too, that there's options for even people who currently have insurance because there are a lot of folks who have been self-insured. And so they can come to this as well. So I think right. that's really good for them to know as well. Absolutely. Okay. Jason, thank you so much for being on the program today. I'm very excited that we're offering this opportunity for our community, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, we'll get everybody signed up, and you'll be busier than a one armed paper hanger. <laughs> I hope so. No, great. All thank right. you. Thanks again. Thanks for joining us. I hope you'll join us again next week when I'll have another exciting guest on the program.